Lord God reigns, and it's found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 7 through 12. This is a Sunday school lesson for June the 4th, 2023, and my name is Tony Miller. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the seventh verse of the text, and it reads as follows. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Again, God reigns is our subject. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to recognize the reign of God as one of the grand themes of the Bible and to connect with the reign of God with the with the God who prevails and to learn how this good news for the exiles was good news for all for the people of all nations. Again, it's my YouTube channel. As you please the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll get my lessons automatically. Please like my lessons. Please share my lessons and leave me comments. All of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. Amen. So page I shared this year that describes me to share the word of God it just gives you an opportunity to understand the point of view of the person sharing the word of God. And that would be myself. Amen. So we have a word here, we have a term here, which is the subject of our lesson is God reigns. And God reigns over the entire earth. He is not just the God of the East or God of the West. He's God of the North and the South and the East and the West. The long arm of the, of God, of the Lord's reign is over everyone. The sun never sets on the omnipresent shadow of our Savior. Jesus. Indeed, he's the greatest in power, high and lofty in dominion, extremely eminent in wisdom and elevated in excellence and glory. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. He reigns in war and peace. He reigns in crisis and in calm. He reigns in economic catastrophe and in economic prosperity. Our God reigns. He reigns over good and evil. He reigns over nations and over individuals. Our God reigns. Our God reigns from his holy throne in glory. Again, we're talking about the reign of Almighty God. Amen. You know, if you've been with me for any period of time, you know that I love timelines. But I love the timeline because what happens is it gives you kind of the viewpoint of God. And here about 3,500 years of, of, of human history in the Old Testament, right? That, 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 that God reigns over it all and, and, and God sees us like he sees this, this timeline. He can see the affairs of man from the beginning to the end and he knows what will happen along the journey. He's omniscient, right? He's omnipresent because he could be in any of these points whenever he decides and, and God Almighty God would intervene in the affairs of humanity only when he feels his demon. Again, he is righteous and he reign and he reigns over it all. And here we see even at the flood when God, or before the flood, when he would kick Lucifer out again and created beings down to the earth. And there's a flood and there will be Adam and there will, there will be, and there are times when God would intervene a thousand, 1500 years after Adam and Eve that he would destroy humanity and start all over. And then he would choose a person, Adam, and they would go in that, that, that chosen people would go to Egypt again. And then there'll be Moses and there you'll see all of the affairs when God would, would just step in a bit, right? And again, like they would go into the wilderness and he would give this people the law and they would make a conquest into the land, right? And this promise to land, the land he promised that one Abraham back when he had spoke to him in Deuteronomy 4. An important part of this lesson to God when he gave them the law and he would give them the ability to move into this new, this promised land. He would tell them that, that, that when you're going into this land, there's a bunch of idols in that land. He says, root out all the people. And if you don't root out all the people, you're going to have a problem. But if you do, you have a problem and you start uh, disobeying those and uh, 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 hooking up with those idols, then I'm going to scatter you from this great land of milk and honey. And he would go through a period of judges and the people would pick, their, they would go through a period of kings and then there a period of kings, they would pick a king, but God would pick Adam, I would, I would pick David. 
and they would go through different periods where God would intervene and then ultimately because of the sin, the sin that they would continually do, the sin they would per per perpetuate, the idolatry they would do for over and over again, God would intervene and, and would scatter the, the northern tribes at the hands of the Assyrian army and he was, and again, he would scatter the, 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 the southern tribe, tribe at the hands of Babylon, Babylonians. But again, because of uh, the promise he made in Deuteronomy 4, that he said that he would restore them if they come back. Again, the timeline of humanity that God reigns over human history, especially over his chosen people. Amen. And like I said, we're in this period of kings and prophets where we're speaking of today. Amen. And the subject of our lesson is this one Isaiah, that he is the, the, the greatest of all of these 16 prophets that I share with you here, that he is one of the four major prophets. I mean, he has the most content. I mean, God spoke and gave him the most content to give to his people. Next one. And I share with you again from Deuteronomy 4. That his people were doing to idolatry and made into this promised land and there and 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 again that they would follow up these idols and then they'll be scattered at the hands of the uh, of the northern tribes at the hands of the syrians the the, the ten uh, tribes to the north and then judah would remain and and still god would send the messengers and and prophets again and kings would would throughout this period of time and and they would continually fall and go contrary to the demands of God, and they would follow after those idols, and ultimately God would, would scatter this one Judah, the remains of, the, of God's chosen people, and they would enter at the hands of Babylon, and they would go into exile at the hands of Babylon. But again, that God foretold that he would be a redeemer of his people after a period of time. And that's where we are today, and that's, again, the life cycle of God's chosen people. Amen. And I share with you this Deuteronomy 4. And God and, and God will say that he's a, a jealous God. He's a consuming fire. And he says that he doesn't want them to go after those idols that they go into this promised land. He says, the Lord, he said, if you do what I tell you not to do, and, 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 and I'm going to tell you, as soon as you, you, you go into this promised land and you go after those idols, he says, the Lord will scatter and disperse you among the peoples, those pagan nations, and you will be left in few number among the nations where I'm going to drive you. And that's what I share with you in the timeline that he, he scattered them. But we are today in verse 29. But from there, from that exile, you will seek the Lord your God. Again, this was a contract that God would make, a conditional contract. You do your part, I will do my part, right? But now that you're coming back to me and you seek the Lord your God and you will find him. And you search for him with all your heart and with all your soul. And we are in distress and tribulation. All of these things come upon you in the latter days. And you will return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice. That's right. And verse 31, for the Lord your God is merciful and compassionate, and a compassionate God. And he will not fail you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant with your fathers, which he swore to them. Again, the word of God. For the people of God, we are, even in our in our New Testament era, we can stand on the same that God is merciful and compassionate; He will not fail you, nor forget. Amen. Let's move on. So now the seventy years has expired, and the decree was made allowing this people, God's chosen people, to return at the hands of King Cyrus. The people are still scattered. They were scattered at the hands of the at the Syrians, and they scattered at the hands of Babylon, and they were returned from exile. The temple was utterly destroyed. Right, the Babylonians would would rise up in the in the in that temple, and they would leave none one stone on top of another, and there was still a small remnant of the people there were there in Jerusalem, and they were unprotected because of the gates and the city walls were damaged by those the, the Babylonians and Persians now in control that they would take over and they would destroy. Babylon and Ezra and Nehemiah will want to rebuild the city and restore the Jewish life. These folks would find favor with this one King Darius, would give them safe passage back. Next slide. 
chapter 49 of our, 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 our text that will lead us up until we are at 52 today. Almighty God promised Israel a restoration. I'm going to share with you in Deuteronomy 4 that he would promise them a restoration if they do thus and so. Amen. In chapter 49 of Isaiah that we are all called to trust in Almighty God. I share with you this lesson I've done before. And, and he's our deliverer and our provider. He promises, his promises are true and his power, he has the power to redeem his people and he has the power to redeem us. I think at that point when I taught here and then and before, I wanted to, to make sure that we impart the same information that God will give to this people that he has it for us and, and for us as well, that from any of the circumstances, any of the calamities we push ourselves to, any of the, the horrible things that we do in our life, that we move far away from God, that he all he has a power to, to bring us back to achieve anything in this life. We can do it with God. I tell you all the time that I'm nothing with God, but I'm everything with God. And that's the whole thing that you have to understand that who you are and if God is for you, that who could be against you? God didn't hear for his chosen people. We've learned that God has a building desire to restore our fortunes greater than our losses. The text talks about, not this text, but another text talks about that, that God has the ability to, to give us what the, the, the caterpillars and the cake worms destroyed and God will give you more than what you've lost. just like he did in the case of Job where Job had lost it all, but God gave him more than when after, that when we go through certain things that God has that power to restore our fortunes greater than our losses. It's like when Israel left, uh, they left after 400 years. They left with so much more than they came in with. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let's move on. In Isaiah 50, I share with you a summary, I'm giving you these these uh, summaries that leads us up from 49 to 50. 51 and we'll get into 52 and and in, in, in chapter 50 uh, that, that that all my, they, they, that these folks that the God's chosen people that they the people of Israel are in exile and they're they're liking themselves to a divorced wife forgotten and forsaken by God and the Lord interrupts this kind of thinking and breaks into a, a challenge as people said where's the bill of divorcement did I ever write you produce it produce the bill Show me where I divorced you. That the God made a covenant. God had entered a covenant relationship with his people. And, and it's just like that 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 you have a, a mate or a, a wife or husband or whatever you have. And and again, and again that, that one person walks off, right? And, and again, this people walked off from God. God is still in the same place. He says, I didn't never gave you a divorce. You're the ones who walked off. You're the one who went in idolatry. And Israel cannot produce it. Of course, you cannot find it because God has never given her a divorce. God cannot divorce those who has taken into a covenant relationship with themselves. If God is with you, who can be against you? God is for you, then God will be with you in perpetuity. And that's what he's trying to share with his people here in Isaiah 50. I share with you leading up to our lesson today in chapter 52. In chapter 51, the book of Isaiah, God says, listen, the Lord's past faithfulness is a promise of future blessings. That's why I share with you the timeline is so important. The timeline is important because what happens is that you see, and that's why I said that sometimes we have to stop and smell the roses. Sometimes it's to, to count our blessings one by one and we can go back. And that's why I share with you timelines in the timeline that here for, for 2,500 years after the, our 2,000 years at, from the time of Abraham to now that, that God has been with his people, that the Shekinah glory of God was with them and he showed the power of God that was always with them, that they're the ones who did went contrary to the, the requirements of God. The Lord's past faithfulness, how he took them from battle to battle, how they won every time, how they were protection. God was with his people for thousands of years. Amen. Let's move on. Again, Isaiah speaking to God's chosen people. You have the assurance of God's promises. Others might say anything to attempt to destroy you. Again, Isaiah speaking to this people here in, 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 in this chapter 51. Again, that he says that, that, that anything that others might, might say something to attempt to destroy your faith. But God, but God has given you his promises. 
God's not a man that he should lie. That he has a long history with you, right? And he has the power to redeem you, right? And he will not turn back his back on his word. God's not an Indian giver. God is faithful. Amen. That chapter 51 that leads us up to our lesson today. That it says, uh, listen Israel, the Lord's past faithfulness is a promise of future blessings that the Lord alone, uh, the Lord alone are deliverance and strength. You call on me in the day of trouble and I shall rescue you like he did all the time. So he did through all the periods of judges as well. God offers deliverance. That's what we learned leading up to our lesson. Setting up our background, let's jump into this lesson, amen. So about, seven, about 16, 17 minutes background, let's jump into this lesson, amen. So the theme for our summer quarter is the righteous reign of God. One of the benefits of reading the whole Bible, we've been doing this for now, if you've been with me for like six years, we're almost approaching six years here on YouTube. And, and, and we've studied the whole Bible. And we're not, not just caught up in the, the New Testament theology, but the old and new, I share with you so many times, there's a thread that's rolled woven from Genesis all the way through to Revelation, and that one would be Jesus. All of us pointing the Old Testament, pointing to Jesus, the New Testament talking about Jesus. That's the whole thread that is that the, that the, the benefits of studying the whole Bible. As you get to discover the running things which are repeated like Jesus, repeated, emphasized, magnified, and developed in scripture that we find today as we navigate through Isaiah, the kingdom of God is for, those that we learn about the kingdom of God or this reign of God is one of the grand themes running through the scripture and is the subject of our study today. Amen. So we begin here in Isaiah 52, when we begin in verse 7. I, I tell you, I love this whole guy, I, Isaiah, and I like how he writes, and I like the tenor of his writing. So I, I give you a bit of the, just three verses of the, the first seven verses, uh, or six verses that lead us up to our text. And here, as Isaiah writes to the, the, this people, and he says, rise up, rise up. Clothe yourself in strength. Again, he's speaking to the Jewish people. Again, this prophet of God, God speaking through him to his people. Rise up and clothe yourself in strength, O Zion of Israel. Put on grand, put on the garments of your glory. Remember, you are God's chosen people. O Jerusalem, the city of the Holy One. For the uncircumcised and the unclean will no longer pass through you, that they will no longer hold you in captivity, right? Shake yourself off, dust, shake yourself off the dust, and arise and sit up. Raise your posture, O Jerusalem, and loosen the chains from your neck that's been holding you back for 70 years, O captive daughter of Zion, for thus says the Lord, you were sold for nothing because you sold yourself into captivity, right? That you went for almost for 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 over a thousand years of idolatry, it's just over and over and over. And he says you were sold for nothing, and you will be redeemed without money. That God will show His power. He's not going to pay anything to get you out, but He will get you out and restore your 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 uh, your grandeur. And He says that you are the old Jerusalem. They clothe yourself in strength. Put on the garments of your glory. I love how this guy writes. Move on. Amen. So again, we are Sunday school lesson. God reigns. And we find in Isaiah 52, and we'll go in verse 7 of our text. And he says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, say, to you, Zion, God, your God reigns, and and I and I, I love the imagery of, of of this this one Isaiah as he writes, and maybe we'll take this into our minds eye and think about about Moses that he would go up on the mountain, right, and he would have this interaction with God, and he would come back 
when God, again, when one of those times when God will intervene in the affairs of humanity and will give them that word, right? And how beautiful are the feet of this one Moses that as he walked down from the mountain after these 40 days, interacting with God, he will bring the law to his people. And he says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring this good news, right? Who proclaim salvation and say to Zion and again, this prophet, and prophets of those as well will bring this good news. It's how beautiful on the mountain are the feet of the messengers, that's the, the, pro the prophets, right? Who bring good news, the good news of peace and salvation, news that God of the God of Israel reigns, and the God of Israel reigns. That's what the prophets all will speak. And Isaiah is speaking as well. I love the way that he that he writes. It's a magnifying point here in the next cell. Amen. To share with you this one Isaiah is, is, is deemed the, the Shakespeare of the Old Testament and he writes these eloquent words to the eventual returnees right the Jews who were hearing this announcement were 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 not physically located in Zion yet right in Jerusalem at this moment at this time in their life they were exiled from their homeland they were held in captivity by the babylonians and now the persians right and jerusalem land ruins and, and the destruction of jerusalem occurred in 586 and, and now the 70 years is expiring and jerusalem the capital city was destroyed along with this royal palace and the temple and all the symbols and the political and the cultural and the spirit and the spiritual identity were leveled to the ground by god but god God made a promise him back in Deuteronomy 4. And he says that if you come back, he made a promise that he said, if you do thus and so, that you be, you'll be my people, I'll be your God. He made a promise that he said, if you come back with a right heart, he said, I will, I will restore you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. God made promises to this people. Amen. I shall read verses eight and nine of our text. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice with the voice together, and they shall sing. With this watchman again, I shall with you, the watchman sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring Zion back again and break forth in joy and sing together. Ye wasted places that the, that, that the destruction that the destruction of the lives, the destruction of his people, that they, God is now allowing the time to expire, the 70 years are over, and the watchman who would stand in the wall, the, the watchman, the one who's prop, the one who could see beyond and see far out, the one who was sitting in the crow's nest can see the, the, the things that are coming and going. But it says the watchman shall lift up their voices and they will sing in praises. Let's magnify this for you give you a better understanding of what's happening here in this text in verses 8 and 9 of Isaiah 52. Amen. But this watchman, the sinatels, or gatekeeper, depending on the text that you're reading from, are important, are part, are important part to maintain the order in the ancient uh, societies. They were the guards stationed for protection at various kinds of gates which would be the city gates or the palace gates or the temple gates in, in ancient cities. And they had thick walls around them to keep out the wild beasts and invading armies. The heavy gates were set within the walls that allowed the entrance and exits and the folks who had to be trustworthy. They were required to alert the public many signs of trouble or good news. So I share with you that that's what, what's, ha what's happening here, that, that, that Isaiah is talking about the, 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 these, these, these guys who are were seeing at the gate. Like I said, the guy would be maybe the crow's nest. He could see so far back, so far wide, and he could see what's coming before me, coming after. That's what the prophets were as well, that they were the, the, the gatekeepers. They were the, the sentinels. They're the watchmen on the wall that they would now proclaim. And, they were, and now the 70 years is over, and they would shout and sing the blessings of God. That's what Isaiah is writing. Excuse me. <coughs> Let's move on. Amen. I love this verse a lot. Verse 10 of our text. And then again, it says that the that Almighty God has flexing, it's flexing this muscle. The imagery that I, Isaiah writes at this moment here in verse 10. 
It's like God, he's got his bare muscles out, he's flexing, he's got showing his flexing his muscle, and he's bare his his holy arm for the world to see his power. That Almighty God is is, is has, now has his redeeming power. Everybody knew about Israel. Israel was such a powerful nation before that the that the the power of Israel was so phenomenal, amazing. The kind of glory of God was with them in the temple of God. That that, that everybody knew that the God of the universe was with his people, and and then now God, his people who walked away from God and God allowed them to be destroyed and God allowed them to be sent into captivity. But now God will flex his muscles and his bare arms for the world to see his power in every nation and every person and every place on earth will witness the victory of our God. The God will now restore his people. So Isaiah says here, again, the word of God. When people, God, I don't know about you, but I think this is good news that we know if we can stand on the word of God and God will flex his muscles with uh, with, with us concerning his word to show that he has a power that no weapon formed against us will prosper. If God's power, if God said it to you, it will come to pass. God has the power and now he's showing you he's flexing his muscles. Again, the word of God for the people of God. Amen. So magnifying this past verse, that how would God do this? That how would God do this with this 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 scattered nation? This scattered nation that will, will defeat Babylon the Great, who was who were the world's fiercest army at the time, but they they don't. They don't. And again, God said that they're going to go into captivity without any money, but they're going to get out without any money as well. That 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 God would raise up the king of Persian army, Cyrus. And 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 uh, to save the day and defeat Babylon, the world's fiercest army. I share with you so many times that God sets up kings and gods, puts them down. God's in control. He reigns over humanity. I share with you the timeline is so important because the timeline shows when God will intervene in the affairs of man when He feels that is deemed necessary. And here, this Babylon, and now God will intervene on humanity again, and He will rise up this one Cyrus who would destroy the world's fiercest army. And God demonstrates that He is not merely the God of, of the former nations of Judah and of Israel, the northern and southern. But God is the ruler of the universe, and God has all nations at His disposal, and, and the sentinels present. Uh, re uh, represent to those who would begin to see these events in the, from a distance. He can see the prophets will see from the distance there, the prophets, they will see what God has said, and that God was said in his word that these are things. It's just like I share with you that the wise men, the Bible says from this point right here, from, from the, this decree that 483 years, that that's when the Jesus would come, that the, the prophets would foretell, and Daniel would speak about 90, the, the 70 weeks of Daniel, that we would go on and on and on about that that's what the watchmen do, that they would give us a, a glimpse into the future. And that's what the watchmen and the sentinels would do. And it says that that the sentinels represent those who would begin to see the events from a distance. For if prophets would see this, there are no implications what's going to happen. But God will show off, reflect his muscles to humanity. Next slide. Verse 11 of our text. And here Isaiah is speaking to this people and he says, Depart ye, depart ye, leave and go from here and go back home. Your 70 years expired and touch. But he says to these people, he says, Touch no unclean thing and go through the midst of her. You've been in Babylon and then exile and be clean that you bear the vessels of the Lord. That's verse 11. It's magnified verse 11 for you. God is sinning. Them home with instructions. And they carry the elements of the temple, right? They carry they carry the, the the elements that were once in the in the very very holy place of the Almighty God with them. And and God says, "Go ye from here," but He says, "Stay away from these false uh, doctrines and idolatries and superstitions." And and He says, "Touch no unclean thing on your journey. Have no fellowship with her idols, and any of her." Unclean and idolatrous actions. Remember those, those other the Baals and the Ashrods. They had the temple prostitutions and everything else, and all, all different kinds of proclivities. And they would they would worship these blocks of wood and stone. And and these people were known for doing this. And he's bare. And he says, and bring none of the her abominations along with you. You're going back home. 
Don't take none of that crap with you when you're going back home. That's what he says. He says that 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 uh, they they go they touch no unclean thing, right? The seven years have passed, but people have a significant problem with idol worship, and that's what they've done over and over and over again for over a thousand years, and they continually continually did this. Even though God says don't, they still did it. So think that the prophet is telling you they need to make sure you don't do any of this when you go back home. Don't take any of that junk with you. Again, the word of God for the people of God. Amen. It's the final verse of our printed text. But you will not leave in haste or go in flight. The Lord will go before you. And God, the God of Israel, will be your rear guard. That when we go, if God sends us anywhere, that God will always be with us. That God takes you from here to there, whether it's school or it's a new business or it's a, a new life or, 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 or it's, it's a new point in your life or even if it's sickness or whatever, that, that, that it's a financial uh, problem or whatever it is, it could be a problem or a blessing, right? That, that what happens is that recognize that God will go before you, but also God will be the footsteps steps in the sand too, is carrying you, be your rear guard. Even though you don't know that he's there, he's always there. Move on to close, amen. So I've mentioned so many times this Deuteronomy 4 in our lesson, but if you seek the Lord your God from there, and you will find him. And if you indeed you seek him with all of your heart and soul in your distress, when all these things happen to you in the latter days, Again, that's what, what happens to us is we, 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 we backslide to God. We, we, we get into a circumstance where God has had a covenant with us. We had a covenant. We made a profession of faith with God and we move so far away from God. And we think that we, we've gone too far that God cannot bring us back. But God, in your distress, and all these things happen to you in the latter days, if you return to the word God and obey him for his merciful God, and he will not let you down or destroy you, for he cannot forget the covenant with you and your answers to that he confirmed by an oath to them that often we move and we leave God. We go far away from God. We're never too far away from God. Again, this people of 70 years, that, that, that many of those who have died off, and, and, and now these younger folks are now are, are, are here in the midst and then they don't even know. And, 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 and Nehemiah and Ezra will have to explain to them the history of their, their this people, but they, they know that they're going back to the land that's promised by, to them by Almighty mighty God, the creator of the universe, right? That God made a covenant with this people and he made an oath to them. And if they go back, they know that God is for them and, they, and, and no one can be against them, that he will not let you down nor destroy you. If he cannot forget the covenant with your ancestors that he had and confirmed by this oath that he made, that he says, if you do this, you do thus and so, that I will be your God and you will be my people. And if you've made some covenant with God, remember, God is never too far away that if you come back with a sincere heart, that he says here, that he will be your God and he will be your rear guard and he will be go before you as well in your circumstances whatever they are. One more so to close. Amen. It's our final verse of, of text. The Almighty God reigns in crisis and he reigns in calm, right? That he reigns in economic catastrophe and he reigns in economic prosperity. Our God reigns and he, he reigns over good and he reigns over evil. And, and, and our God reigns over nations and over individuals and our God reigns over every aspect of the lives of, of, of his people. And he does it forever and you need to trust him and I need to trust him and we all need to trust that God is in control over all of the, the aspects of the humanity, right? And our God reigns and that our God reigns over the lives of you and I and over all of his people. people. We need to trust him. And that is our Sunday school lesson this week. My prayer is something you've learned this week. Strengthen your faith. The Lord provides all your needs. Learn something worthy of sharing. 
the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray and ask these things always in his name we pray. Amen.